Hey everyone, welcome. Today we are talking about, I guess, best practices and tips for what to consider when you're uh, looking to do get into bidding commercial work, commercial electrical work. We have a lot of uh, customers or prospects or electrical contractors that come to us um, looking for estimating software because that's that's what we do, electrical estimating software, and. They are a lot of times doing residential work as their primary and maybe dabbling in some light commercial, but they know when they make that jump to bidding on commercial work, they need to, I don't know, figure out how to do it, how to do it or what, 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 what's different. What do they need to consider that's different? Maybe they've done some work and it didn't really work out or they didn't win any bids and they're like, okay, we need to take a look at what we're doing wrong or what we need to consider doing differently. And Brian has put together a, a bunch of tips uh, to discuss and share today. And we also have two more parts to this. So there'll be another part in May and another one in June. So hang on for those. So Brian, uh, before I jump over to you, I just wanted to mention there's a chat here if you're on YouTube live off to the right, and we'll be answering your questions probably as we go. But if we don't get to your question right away, um, I'll try to circle back towards the end. And be sure to like this video and subscribe it to help us out and to get uh, help our videos get out in front of more people. So what do you think, Brian? Ready to, uh, ready to go here. All right. I think, Derek, you know, as Derek said, the, the real uh, reason we did, we put together this uh, series of webinars is we get so many people to come to us trying to make a transition from residential to commercial. And one of the things that dawns on them, a big light that goes on, no pun intended, is that they need to have a, a more sophisticated, accurate form of estimating. So that's, you know, what we see a lot of the time is people want to make that transition and that they need to have an estimating program that, that can help them. So why do they want to go into commercial to begin with? Why, why, why would an electrical contractor want to do that? Typically, you can have availability of larger jobs. You know, there's, jobs can be very, very large commercial jobs. Uh, so that's, an, that's something that might be attractive rather than doing small residential jobs. Potentially, and there's no absolute rules in this, but potentially you can make higher profits on commercial. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is that you might have, might have less competition. You know, literally, uh, uh, one electrician can wire a house, or certainly one electrician can, and a helper can wire a house. But when you get into the larger jobs, you're going to probably have less competition just because it takes a, a real organization to to do that. So these are all reasons that you you might want to people want to consider doing commercial work in addition to or as opposed to residential. One of the things I always see, and I, I've taught an estimating fundament, estimating fundamentals class many, many times over the years, and what people are often doing is is doing unit pricing, or pricing it by the square foot. So they don't know how to make that transition. They they know just by trial and error that they can charge $100 for an outlet or $150 for a light and make adjustments to to tweak it there. But you can't do that on commercial. Uh, you can't bid it per, per foot uh, unless you're comparing jobs that are almost identical, which by definition with commercial is almost never the same. You could have a thousand square foot office or a 10,000 square foot office, and you could have entirely different items, electrical items in each of the projects. So you, you can't do it per foot and you can't really do unit pricing again. If you, even if you've used a price of X dollars for a certain type of outlet or uh, in the past, it just won't work in commercial. Uh, you know, you're going to have a price again that you've adapted or utilized for residential work, and you found that's pretty useful. But when you try to apply that to to a commercial job, it just all breaks down. The size of the job could be very different, so the scope of the uh, the materials that are in that unit price or in that item and that uh, unit price are going to be just really different. I always use the example of a a plumber who can give you a price for a 50 gallon water heater pretty much uh, uh, regardless of where it's going. Uh, you just can't do that with electrical, even just to something like a basic outlet or receptacle outlet is going to be different depending on the circumstances of how many there are and what kind of wiring you're using and just all kinds of variables that will come into play. 
So what you really need to get to is a system that has assemblies. So when you take off one item from your drawings, from your prints, it generates multiple items. Uh, so you know, the receptacle will include a box and a plate and a plaster ring and some wire nuts and screws and grounding pigtails and all the stuff that comes off of that assembly. Um, so that's really what you need to do. Now, there are lots of programs, uh, especially like Electrical Bid Manager, that, that do that for you automatically. Um, and maybe just as important, they can be modified either for the job or they can be modified in the system to adapt to the kind of uh, requirements for the kind of jobs you're bidding. So that whole assembly process is really important to, to bidding electrical work properly. You have to be able to generate a complete material list based on your takeoff, based on your counts and your measurements. If you try to do that totally manually, it's a very tedious process. So the, the idea of using assemblies that are built into your software really speeds up the process. One of the problems with bidding residential work, is I see this all the time, uh, the residential blueprints are usually much, le much less detailed. You know, you'll be lucky if they even lay out all the locations of all the electrical outlets and fixtures and all that. Sometimes they don't even do that. They don't give you a lot of detail. You know, I've seen lots of res residential jobs. They won't tell you the amperage of the outlet. You just kind of have to know or guess or confirm. We're, we're, with commercial work, that's just not the way it's done. Everything is very detailed and specified. And, and some jobs and some prints are better than others, of course. But for the most part, the commercial jobs will have much more detailed, much more specifications, more consistent. Uh, you're not being left to interpret things that are inconsistent and inaccurate when you're like you will in a lot of residential jobs. Um, I've seen guys bid residential jobs with absolutely or very little electrical uh, symbols on the drawing. They just have to figure it out. Um, so one of the things, you, again, you have to look at when you're making this transition of doing more commercial work. Now, again, a lot of the people we're talking to are people that were and, you know, are, are qualified commercial electrical uh, electricians. But then when they start their own business, uh, what's available is residential jobs because they're relatively small. They can handle them with the minimum amount of cash flow challenges. But when you make that transition to commercial, there's a lot of things that change. One of them is the type of electrician you need. You need an electrician who can run conduit versus Romex. And again, I've heard this comparison all over the years many times. There's electricians who are really good at what they call roping a house with, with Romex. Um, those are not the same electricians that you would need uh, skill-wise most of the time to run conduit and vice versa. A lot of very skilled electricians who run conduit and and are not very good at running Romex. They're not necessarily the same skill uh, set. So you've got to be aware of that when you're hiring people and training people, that it's a different type of skill in the, in the industry. Commercial wiring is usually a little more complex. You get into three-phase circuiting most of the time versus most of your residential is single-phase, uh, that kind of thing, which is a little bit less complicated. And just by nature, commercial jobs are have bigger, heavier materials. You know, you don't run four inch conduit very often on a residential job, but it might be a pretty common thing to run feeders with two, three, four inch conduit and bigger wires and heavier materials. So your tools uh, are going to have to be more extensive when you get into commercial work. Now, I'm not an expert on this by any means, but I, I do tend to run into issues with certification and training. Some states require ongoing education to maintain your license, excuse me. Others don't, or and the, the requirements are different. So you need to know what they are in your state to have a license to do uh, electrical work, commercial or residential, and what the ongoing education requirements are and that kind of thing. So you, you need to check into that if you don't know uh, already what the requirements are for your licensing. And of course, there are a lot of unlicensed residential 
electricians, but if you're going to go into the commercial world, you're definitely going to need to get mm-hmm. a proper license and certification and insurance and all those kind of things. So how do you hire? Where do you look for electricians? There are national and local electrical trade associations. I'm going to mention a few of those in a minute. Uh, Again, some have local offices, some are national, uh, but there are trade electrical trade associations that are going to be able to provide you with training and with uh, manpower to a certain extent. I, I do run into a lot of people that do internal training. Again, they feel like there aren't enough uh, training options through the different trade associations and all that. So they train their own electricians from the ground up, take them in as a brand new uh, apprentice and train them from day one. That That's certainly a, you know, a viable way to do it. It takes a little longer. It might be a little more expensive, but it's certainly an option depending on what's available in your area. There are trade colleges in different parts of the country where they're learning, you know, basic trade skills. Um, Sometimes the trade colleges are very general. Sometimes you can go into an electrical trade college in your area that might have uh, basic electrical electrician training. And again, like I was referring to before, you know, you want to look at the difference between the electricians who have industrial experience versus commercial experience versus residential. I'm sure there are some jacks of all trades, but uh, you know you don't want to necessarily hire a residential electrician who's done little or no commercial work. They're just not going to be as proficient. These are some of the resources that we run into all across the country. There's the IEC, the Independent Electrical Contractors. They have offices uh, in oh, probably at least 20 different cities throughout the country. And they provide basic code training, basic uh, skills training. Uh, even some of them provide estimating training. Uh, those are typically non-union, independent electrical contractors. Oh, they are. I mean, if you're in the IEC, you're you're non-union or in, you're independent. On the other side is NECA, the National Electrical Contractors Association. And again, they have offices all throughout the country. I bet you they have 30, 40 different, 50, 30, 40, 50 different offices. Now that again, that's a union organization so the people that go through the the NECA training and the people that you would be referred to from NECA will be union electricians. ABC is similar to IEC but they do training for all the trades where IEC is just electrical but ABC has electrical divisions and again they're in at least a a handful maybe a a dozen or more cities throughout the country. Uh, We've worked with MECA, the Massachusetts Electrical Contractors Association same concept they, they're doing training of basic electrical code and skills and all that uh, they i believe have union and non-union members kind of a last resort and we see this a lot in certain parts of the country is going to trade labor services you just go and hire you know however many people you need uh, maybe with little or no actual electrical training or qualifications but mm. um, you can hire people that through these trade associations and you just, you pay X dollars an hour. They're not employees. Some will have experience. Some will have uh, little or no experience. So it's a little bit of an unknown, but it, it's very uh, not unusual in a lot of parts of the country because there just isn't enough, uh, enough skilled labor out there. I guess you could always fall back to, ZipRecruiter, those indeed, the general kind of services. You can hire electricians. I know there's a, a radio commercial on the on my local uh, sports radio that I listen to almost every day that has an advertisement for electricians because they're growing their company and they're trying to find electricians. I forget if it was ZipRecruiter or indeed it was one of those general ones. But the, the advertisement actually, the example is an electrical contractor who needs electricians. Hmm. And like I said before, again, there's local trade colleges. You, and I, I don't have any kind of list. I know I've run into them in uh, Minneapolis has one. Um, and I'm sure there's several throughout the country with trade colleges, which have uh, some degree of electrical training. And then when the, you know, when they come out of those schools, they, they're ready and uh, able to, to go into a job. Hmm. I think that's about 
it, Derek. Um, Do you want to mention, if you can recall off the top of your head, what our follow-up webinars will cover? I don't remember, honestly, no. <laughs> okay. I know we've got another 10 or 12 topics to cover. So yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll follow up with that. I should have looked at that before we started today, but yeah, we do have some follow-up okay. topics. When we started talking about this webinar, we really realized there was just a whole lot of topics. So and rather than make one long webinar, we, we, we thought it would be better to do two or three shorter ones. So we will have yeah. a follow-up on this and, and we'll put the content in. With the recordings, they will be linked. Like in the description, there'll be links to each of the uh, parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it will be easy to jump between them. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for joining us today. And uh, just another reminder to subscribe to our channel. Uh, so you'll get alerts to get more, uh, to, well, about our upcoming videos that we'll be doing. And please like this video. The more likes we get, the more the algorithm puts us in front of other contractors and other um, estimators that are out there looking for, I don't know, a little little extra training or maybe estimating software. Um, I don't have any questions for us today. I think today's topics were pretty straightforward. Um, we might dig into a little more details on some stuff in the, the follow-ups. Um, I know, I don't know, did you have anything else to add, Brian? No, I was just going to mention if you have any uh, need for training, you can go to visioninfosoft.com and go to the training. There's lots of different options. We have one-on-one -on -one training. We have virtual classes at introductory and a, an extended training. We also do on-site training. We do, um, and we, again, do a lot of one-on-one -on -one online training too. So there's pretty much something for everybody, depending on where you are and what kind of training you need. Um, you can look at our so, training options you know, on the website. Yeah, and, and this may be on, on a different part of uh, the future webinar, but um, I know you train a lot of electrical contractors or es electrical estimators that are doing exactly what we talked about, right? They, they're making that jump. They've, they've yep. purchased our electrical estimating software, electrical bid manager, and they got training with it and they're like, Hey, Brian, can you show me how to use this? And I'm trying to make that jump into doing more commercial work. Uh, I'm sure you've, you've had a so lot of what I'll conversations do sometimes if they, they're, what, what I do sometimes is actually go through the takeoff process with them virtually. So they'll, we'll get a set mm -hmm. of plans and actually go through the takeoff process. So they kind of handhold them through the process. So that's an option too. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for being here, everyone. And look for our next part in this series. And be sure to share any ideas you have on other topics you'd be interested in hearing us go over. I'm sure there's some interest in, uh, I don't know, since it's topical, like what the potential or actual tariffs might do um, for material pricing. And I guess I just wanted to throw out there that one of our services is epic pricing service that is um that we track almost two million electrical materials and the how the, you know we update their pricing each week sometimes multiple times a week on the commodity items wire yeah, and conduit actually, and such especially pay a lot of attention to the commodities and mm -hmm. you know we'll got our ears open and we're watching the data to see what trends there are and they'll they'll, they'll yeah. be incorporated into the epic pricing we're, we're expecting to see some change this, yeah. this year. Um, but we'll see uh, nothing, nothing, nothing has, uh, um, popped up that was enough to anyways, it, it'll probably be something that we will do in a, a, a webinar on in the future as we start seeing changes occurring. Um, all right. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody.